want to welcome everybody. Do a quick presentation here on the shark pattern. Now, the shark pattern is a relatively new pattern in the last few years that I released in my volume two book and then really did a further detail and write up on it in volume three. I think it's outside the M and W, the patterns that most people know. So we need to look at a couple of the components that really make up what this is all about. Uh, we're going to look at first this reciprocal ABCD. This looks like a lazy Z or an S, and it's a different type of estimation than the normal equivalent ABCD. It actually is a, a different measurement altogether. And we apply this to non-M and W type structures. It's also really effective when we're looking at channels. But we'll look at the measurements itself because uh, each of the reciprocal measurements much like the regular ABCD pattern. When we look at the examples here of how to apply these, the same uh, principles of looking at the retracement versus the projection give us an idea of symmetry. So here is an illustration of a bullish ABCD, a reciprocal. This could be the first thrust in a counter trend move in a larger uptrend. And then we have a secondary thrust. Usually these are generally approximate if the channel is valid. So depending on what the extension here is at the C point, we look for a corresponding retracement. If it was a 1618 at the C point, we would look for a 1618. This chart of FedEx on a weekly shows that whole idea here. Uh, initial thrust, this AB segment goes to a 1618. We just look at the uh, approximated move 50 to 32, 33, it's about 17, and just 17 approximated, looking in this 43 area, bearish reciprocal ABCD, same type of thing. Here's the last clear thrust in the downtrend, basically from 76 up to uh, 89, 13 points, 13 points. Now, the other component is this 113 extension. This is a failed wave, failed harmonic wave. Um, really important structure unto itself to learn because it usually represents a failed move, a breakout, failed breakout or failed breakdown. Used to be called a shake in or a whipsaw or shake out. The key is to look at the 113 and the 886 zone. Those are really important in a lot of you know the RSI BAM divergence and confirmation. But this simple measurement, I think, helps when you're looking at uh, really determining whether or not a breakout or breakdown is for real. And a lot of times it's gauged simply by the 113 or 1618 extension. These are accompanied by harmonic impulse waves. This gives us uh, more measured movements. But these are outside the M and W structures, and um, they should be treated as important as complex patterns. But we're really looking for specific moves. So we combine the two of looking at this failed wave as a bullish wave. Remember, some kind of extended move down. And then the 113 nominally takes out the prior low. This is a pattern unto itself to, to really a kind of a reversal pattern to become aware of especially when we're looking at indicator confirmation, HSI, RSI. This is really helpful. Here's the bearish extension of the 113. And we've actually seen that recently in the NASDAQ. So we look for that failed wave. Looks really strong, but just doesn't bust through the 113. And we combine that with the extreme harmonic impulse wave. Now, some of you know the 5.0 pattern. And so this actually is the precursor of that structure. And then this extreme harmonic impulse wave forms between that 113, 1618 zone. And we look at this entire extreme segment unto itself, and we'll look at it in a second, but uh, the, the really the whole fact that the, uh, the structure is unable to continue in the predominant trend, we get an initial reaction. We're then trying to respond off of this type of move. Now, we have some type of extended rally here, form an initial high, 
then this the nature of this XAB move pretty tight and it's either at a 113 or a 1618 but it's a failed breakout when we see that and we take out this a point it's usually the beginning of a larger downtrend this type of situation in the bearish same type of deal we have an extended move down xab look at that b point can't take out the 113 and then gives you a really fast reaction. These impulse reactions off of that move are some of the uh, best setups, best reactive setups, especially right above the 1618. Now we bring the shark pattern into that. It's critical because it precedes the 5 Now we'll talk about the 5 in a separate series, but uh, I want to look at the components that make up this pattern because that 886113 area of the retest is critical. Uh, we look for that convergence of the extreme impulse wave, the 1618 to the 224. And these really define natural states of extreme impulsive reactionary uh, moves against prior support or resistance. And it's usually a counter trend move. So we're going to trade it. We're looking for that reactive expecting volatile behavior. We want to employ some pretty aggressive trade management techniques. Uh, also, uh, really look for confirmation as well in indicators and demand that the immediate reaction uh, give you follow through after the extreme harmonic impulse waves tested and especially where that falls with the 886 and the, the 113. So look at it like this. Here's a bullish shark. We have that extreme zero XAB extended move. This is this XAB move is the failed breakout. That gives us a, a another reaction down where now we're dealing with uh, uh, this 886113 natural support with an un, uh, unsustainable 1618224 move. And this is really kind of a sharp bounce that we're looking at in this zone against the prior support low, especially where this 1618224 AB comes in. Now here's Euro dollar, 15 minute. Really clear structure of a failed prior high, completely annihilate it, dump it down. Now we know there's going to be some reaction here. Don't know if it's going to go all the way back to the prior highs, but we do assume that we're going to look for at least a 50% 618 reaction here that if we get it into this zone, that that's where this is a very high probability profit segment. Here's the PRZ of that Euro dollar 15 minute chart. We're focusing on the 886 and then the 224 just beyond there. Remember the 1618 would be the minimum, but that's way up here. So the other minimum, the 886, now that tells it's more like 140, 80. Mix in the, the extreme 224, that's down at 140, 70. That creates a really ideal zone. Now here's looking at it, just throwing in the 50 for a second. And this is a fantastic uh, example of great structure, all the components here intraday setup retesting an important low we know we're going to get some reaction and uh, probably do a follow-up where we uh, i'll outline the details of how to look at that reaction and how do you know if you're going to get just the reaction or the larger move like this we can partially use trade management and look at some indicators but at a minimum when we get down to this point at the terminal bar where the shark completes say 140.75, 140.80 at the 8.86, we know we're going to see some kind of inter intraday reaction, unless this totally blows out, which it doesn't, because within the immediate next bar, we see stabilization. And then 45 minutes later, this thing's starting to climb up. But at 140.80, we're expecting a minimum reaction up to the 50 level around 14135 14140 call it 60 pips that's 
how we expect it. That's how we measure that. This turns into a 5-0 pattern. That's, but this is our expectation. As if we have confirmation, we're not looking at relative strength or harmonic strength index here for these purposes. I really want to focus on the structure, but even the individual bars give you the clear stabilization that something's happening. And that's a very ideal, clear harmonic 50 pip move, 50 pip expectation. Better way to, to outline it. Looking at this here, back up to the 50. Now, look at other, we can look at other uh, secondary measures. Um, but one simple way to handle this situation is take half your position off up to the 50% reaction. We typically look for another follow through up to the 886. This kind of blow off thing is, yes, that happens, depends on the larger time frame. But definitely want to take half off no matter what at the 50 level with an automatic limit order. Bearish shark, same type of thing, creates that zone against the prior high, especially focused on the extreme 1618 to 224. Here's the Canadian dollar on a daily chart, retesting this important high. All the components here, really nice 1618 divergence. And look at the XA nature. That's really critical uh, to see in the shark. I think sometimes people want to uh, try to draw sharks that aren't there. If this XAB, it really extends down well beyond 2.0, it's not going to be a shark. It has to be a tight divergence type of alignment to set up that reaction that gets you to the 886 and look on the terminal bar this big daily pretty incredible that immediate rejection here's the prz and look we're focused the whole time you're thinking to yourself 886 is at 105.94 call it 106 the 2.0 is at 10670 that gives you the ideal zone now here's another chart of going it of the, the shark going to a 5 0. This in this case goes beyond the 50%, but still, no matter what time frame, no matter uh, what market, when we're trading a shark, we want to take half off at the 50 level. And if you want to try to catch more and let the rest ride, uh, at least you got half off there. You're going to get that type of reaction. It's going to be quick. So look at that shark pattern. Look at the components because it's different the M and W types. Precursor to the 5.0, and we'll do a follow-up in this series on that. Uh, and it's an incredible pattern when we're retesting prior support resistance. And always look at that extreme harmonic impulse. That's got to be at least a 1618, but as much as a 224. That's the definitive uh, segment of long as the minimum 886 retracement is tested you have the 1618 you have the 886 of, of the retracement tested you have a pattern and then the 113 is the uh, that's the limit that's the prz limit and then we start looking at the stop loss and i'll follow up on that in the next one look at the stop loss in greater detail and look at uh the profit targets how it turns into a 5-0 so thanks, everybody. Really good session. If you want to check out more, uh, there's books and uh, check out the website. We have the free membership and lots of information at HarmonicTrader.com. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to me at HarmonicTrader at HarmonicTrader.com. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time.